So this is the text we're going to be using this year, uh, confirmation. It's really pretty simple. And I thought we would just take um, just take a moment to, to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to be with us today. Um, as we seek to rest more fully in the, in the life of the Holy Spirit in us. I'm just going to give you an image that's been staying with me for quite a while. Um, because maybe it'll help you. Not, and it's not a, a, to brag about my experience. It's just to say, here, here's what I experienced in prayer. Um, I think sometimes we have such vague notions of who the Holy Spirit is. And, and that's really understandable. So, um, while I was in prayer, I was just kind of saying, Father, you know, where, where are you with me? And, and the troubles and challenges I'm dealing with at the moment. And um, I had this image of just resting, of my nephew resting in my lap. He's also my godson, resting in my lap as we were sitting in front of a campfire. Now, he and I loved to make fires and spend time together with them. And as this went, it transformed into uh, myself experiencing like I was the, my godson and I was resting in the father's lap. Kind of like Jesus is the beloved son resting with his father at all times. When he's resting with his father, he is, he is always in contentment. He's always at peace. He's always experiencing great happiness and joy. Okay. And I began to wonder, where's the Holy Spirit for me? And as I was entering into this in prayer, the kind of the reality that the fire in front of us, the campfire in front of us, was like an image of the Holy Spirit, a symbol, if you will, the, this, this heat, this light, this warmth coming off of that fire was... Um, really a blessing to me, really warming my heart, warming my feet, warming all parts of me. Like the Holy Spirit's fire enlivening and emboldening me as a beloved son, for some of you as a beloved daughter, okay? And that as I looked out, like all that I could see was, if you will, because of the fire of the Holy Spirit there, he was the, the fire was the one enlightening the trees you know, being able to see things out in the darkness. Um, and that when I looked through the fire, it, it changed the experience out there. Um, I just have one, one extra person join again. So welcome, bud. Nice to see you here. Um, and so as I kind of prayed over that image of, of the Holy Spirit, it's been one as campfire, it's been one that's been really uh, been powerful for me, and I hope it, it maybe is a little bit helpful for you as well, okay? Um, so with that kind of image of the Holy Spirit, maybe transforming your mind and your heart into you know, who God wants to be for you, um, let's, let's begin with a little, a very simple little prayer. It's a very traditional prayer. It's one that's kind of nearly as old as a church. Um, but we'll just pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Holy Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. So, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, as we're talking here, I'm just going to see what the chat box brought up here. Okay, sounds like I need to come up a little louder. I hope this is uh, helping. So, is that better, everybody? Not as good? Needs to be louder? That private chat, you want to tell me, kind of give me a little feedback there? Maybe that's better. Um, can I get a thumbs up if that's better? 
Mr. Royce. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks there, Blaine. Appreciate you guys. That's pretty good. All right. All right. I love it. I can get some audio feedback. Great. Okay. So here's what I hope to do today. This is, this is our goal for today. We don't have loads of time because of uh, uh, limitations on Zoom in our current uh, purchase agreement here. So this book here is available uh, digitally, okay? So, but it's also available in paperback form and it's gonna be uh, in the front of the church, okay? So it's gonna be in a box, confirmation books. Um, so I'm gonna invite you to get this, okay? And uh, take it home, okay? Um, and I will also provide the link um, to you or your parents um, after we get done here, the same link that I sent this out on, uh, on for the Zoom invitation, okay? Father, will it be at both churches or just Plank? I will have it sent down to um, St. Mary's. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so, I invite you to, however, um, use some very simple things that uh, um, you guys can do while you're at home, while we're kind of starting to pray and think about this, okay? So the first thing is, I want you to write down this page number, okay? Page 125, uh, it's towards the very end of the book, okay? And so these are things that anyone can do at home, okay, in prayer. So there's a little bit here on choosing a name. We, we often talk about having a, a saint's name as a confirmation name, okay? You can choose your own name if your name is a saint's name. That's totally fine. Um, let's say... Um, if your name was Cecilia, you know, there's a Saint Cecilia and you could feel very uh, close with that saint and say, you know, I want that saint to be um, my intercessor, my special intercessor. You know, pick that saint. That's great. Um, maybe you don't have a saint name as a, as a given name, so you want to pick one. The confirmation name needs to be, however, uh, the name of a saint. Um, not just somebody like you, you look up to, okay? Some saintly person that you know, but someone who is a, a declared saint on our, on, in, the, in the church, okay? So that's, that's the first thing. And this kind of helps you go through on page 125 of picking out a saint name, okay? Um, it, it goes through a little bit about the significance of a name. You know, your parents, or parents, you picked out a name for your, your child. And, you know, it wasn't like, oh, I'll, I'll name my child Toyota because, you know, Toyota is great. Um, no, it's something that takes quite a bit of, of thought and intentionality. Um, this is really an identity that we're asking God to help us by the power of his Holy Spirit to live. And so we want to look at those saints and say, this is someone that really inspires me. This is who I want to be my intercessor and is praying for me, but also the one that I'm going to, um, in my own way, emulate in my life. Okay. There's someone that you want to be like. Okay. That's, that's the first part. Um, now... I'm recording this, so part of me is trying to figure out, I feel like an old man here, um, how to get just my picture on here. There we go, that'll help. Um, okay, so there we are. I love looking at myself. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not that conceited yet. Um, so picking out a saint name, okay, that's, that's the first. So, you know, it's, it's all about identity. Like you look back to people in the, uh, in the Bible and you say, wow, that was a powerful person. That was a, uh, really they had a tremendous history there. I mean, you look at Saint, you look at King David, he was looked at as a saint, um, not because of all of his failures, but because of his repentance towards God. You know, that's, 
you know, maybe you might say that's, that's me. You know, I find I'm always slipping up, but gosh, I, I want to turn back to God. Um, you might look at like the prophet Elisha or Elijah, those two prophets, uh, so powerful in the life of the uh, early of the Israelites, how much they did in speaking the word of truth to people. Okay, so those are some things to, to kind of think about and, and bring into bring in your heart and bring in your conversation with God in prayer. Okay, that's that's the first thing that I'd like for us to to kind of rest with here. Okay. Um, now here's the second thing that we're going to look at. Okay. And believe it or not, I'm just going to kind of keep going through this part of the back of the book. So the other part here is, uh, choosing a sponsor. And I'm not sure if this image on the screen is all backwards for you or not. Uh, but anyway, it's page 126 and it talks about choosing a sponsor. Now, some of you might have heard of a confirmation sponsor before. Maybe you haven't. But a confirmation sponsor should be somebody that you look up to. You're like, when I think of somebody that's like a modern day saint, you know, like they're the, you know, like they're a person that I live with or I know that's, you know, close to me. Man, I want to be more like them. You know, and we say, great, that should be a confirmation sponsor for you. Because what we ask for a confirmation sponsor is that they would then uh, spend time with you, whether it's in person or by distance, by virtual, to say, tell me about what's going on in your heart. Tell me what you're learning. Um, and maybe they'll talk with you kind of about their own spiritual journey, which I hope they would. And then be able to say, you know, you know, you're going to be able to get through this. We're going to get through this together. Um, and um, we'll, uh, and so they can help navigate some of these things that you're going through as, as a young person, okay? Um, but there's a few requirements of a confirmation sponsor, okay? First, they need to be someone that is confirmed already. Kind of hope they would have the grace of the Holy Spirit with them in a sealed way before they would be you know, kind of giving, helping us with that, okay? The second thing is that they need to be at least 16 years old. So someone that was confirmed uh, in emergency as, a, as, a, as an infant, that's one of the requirements. I suppose it probably could be waived if you have somebody that is say maybe 15 or 14 and you look up to and that was their situation, and that's great. We can, we can talk about that. Um, the other, the other kind of third part is that they need to be someone that's living their, their Catholic faith. You know, there's someone that's going to church regularly, weekly. Um, there, there's someone that's, you know, not living in a life of sin of some sort of, of open sin. Okay. Um, so those are kind of being a practical Catholic. That needs to be one of the requirements. Um, so remember, this doesn't have to be family. It doesn't have to be necessarily friends. It could be someone that you look up to, okay, that you know in the area. Um, and of course, that's pers that person does have to be baptized. You have to be have to be baptized to be confirmed. So, um, but maybe you didn't weren't aware of that. But anyway, so that's um, uh, a deeper part of that requirement. So you know, as we go forward, um, I'm going to try and have us meet every, about this time every month, okay? So we are on the second Wednesday of the month, but we're gonna try and meet every second Wednesday. Um, and whether it's gonna be by Zoom or whether it's gonna be in person, uh, we'll have to figure out as um, seasons and conditions go, okay? Um, we are going to have a retreat. I haven't set those dates. I mean, this, all of COVID has just really thrown off my all of my uh, kind of week planning that I would normally have. So uh, I hope you'll bear with me as we kind of look forward to this. So do any of you want to chat any questions to me or uh, raise a hand or come up and ask a question? That'd be great. I see one person has already chatted. Will we be able to get them right after Zoom? 
yes, if you want to, they're, I'll leave them out until I go to, go to bed. So um, they are currently on the bench out in front of the church here at St. John's, um, pretty well marked. So you can get them right off of there if you want, right after this, or they'll be inside the front of the church. Uh, also in the same box marked confirmation texts. So um, any questions? You don't want to hit their microphone, ask a question. Hello? Anybody? Nope. Simple enough. Okay. Not uh, getting any questions. Okay. So I will send out that link to this digital book for those of you that might be further away um, than living in town. Um, and we will start this process, okay? So, um, you know, I would invite you, if you're not already, take some time each night to pray. One of the simplest things that you and I can do when we pray is just simply to say, Father, Show me who you are to me. Okay. And then just to sit in, in kind of a quiet in silence and listen. Listen in the depths of your heart. The Father wants to show himself to you. Jesus has, showed, has told us that you know, he reveals to us the Father, that the Father and I are one. And that we know that Jesus and the Father send us the Holy Spirit. It's not just a simple um, kind of me and Jesus thing, but it's the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And in that kind of trinity of persons, uh, you and I are drawn into that relationship with them. Okay, So it's not just simply kind of a, um, a segment, if you will, but it's rather a whole community that we're being drawn into a deeper relationship with God who loves us and wants to bless us. So I invite you every night to take, you know, five minutes of prayer. Just say, Father, show me who you are for me. Show me your Holy Spirit. And, you know, wait. If you're not reading the Bible, I'm going to ask you to start reading in the book of Acts, okay? If you are reading in the Bible, great. But I'm going to ask you to start reading in the book of Acts. I want you to read the first chapter of the book of Acts. And then at your next time, read the second chapter. Now, chapters are pretty quick. Are pretty quick. But after you've read those, that chapter, take some time to just imagine it. What was that like? What was the experience like? Ask God, where, am, where are you finding me in this? Where am I finding myself in this? How is this experience for me? Okay. So I don't have a whole lot of other uh, content for you guys and gals out there and parents, but uh, I will try and type up some of this to get it out to you as well. Well, I love you all. I wish we could be together. I look forward to our next time together. Um, and we might have to have a few more frequent ones of these so that we kind of all get on pace. Um, and that's okay. So um, you'll see those things specified as we go along and, and uh, we'll work from there. God bless you. I keep you. Have a good night and I look forward to seeing you in person.